first world order radio final lead final lead we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Islam. We're back once again. Dr. Alain Bay. And we will be going over tonight aspects of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World, Moorish Divine National Movement, in which that we will be going into the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And we're going to go back into the source of these particular principles and see how it has become modernized or have led up to us today. Um, before we get started, we want to face the east, put about seven, and do the Moorish American prayer. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. You want to deal with Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, true peace, freedom, and justice, and how this correlates to the mother of virtues, the higher self. Because this is all related and all connected. Because those particular freedoms or principles of freedom is defined for us in keys. 69 and the 101 and key 70 in the 102s and it states what is the higher self the higher self is the mother of virtues and harmonies of life and breeds justice mercy love and right we understand that these principles in which that is breeded in which it is producing Virtues and harmonies of life Or the principles or attributes of the higher self And the higher self Is symbolized as Here Or springing forth from The principles of Mayat Of course we know Prophet Nobudrali 
in Egyptian adapt expect for us to put two or two together in order to go back into the Egyptian mythologies and teachings, principles, and connect that law, true peace, freedom, and justice were the principles of Mayat, and Mayat symbolized the concepts of truth, righteousness, justice, law, order, balance, and morality, known as the cardinal virtues. The doctrine of Mayat is represented in the declaration of Rekhati Murti Fe'ent Mayat, which are the 42 negative confessions, as I refer to them as the 42 cardinal virtues listed in the papyrus of Ani, and which that you can get the book E.A. Wallace Budge's book, in which he speaks about um, the papyrus of Ani, the principles of Mayat, known as the 42 Negative Confessions, misnomer. Um, you can get Egyptian hieroglyphics, the hieroglyphs, um, as well as some other books by E.A. Wallace Budge. But the 42 Confessions, of course, when you translate it, we understand that in the Old Testament there was Ten Commandments, and these Ten Commandments is said to come through Moses, and we know Moses was an allegorical character. Moses is symbolic to the Moses the third, as well as also to Ankhantin or Akhenaten, who was Amenhotep the fourth. It was a composite story. Akhenaten or Ankhantin is the one in which that combined the priesthoods in particular the teachings of the priesthood of Amen Ra or Amen in which that he put these principles together in which that form Atan. Atan is the sun disk in which that you often see at the top of the Caduceus or Uraeus symbolized as Alcyon which is the central sun in our solar system, excuse me, in our galaxy, in which that our solar system travels around every 25,928 years. Um, it tells you within the book of Acts that Moses was learned in all the ways of the Egyptians. That is symbolic to the fact that these principles was carried through. Of course, we know we've seen the cartoon as children or either as adults in which that dealt with Moses being the prince of Egypt. Right? According to the story, he was adopted by the Egyptian royal family, um, allegedly under... Um, Ramesses. However, um, what this actually shows is that the stories coming from the Hebrews, Israelites, said Jews or those who was Jehutis, followers of Tahuti, was very familiar with these principles. And that if there was no historical Moses, then others most likely borrowed a few um, of the principles of Mayat in which that composed the Ten Commandments. In the 42 Confessions of Mayat, the first is thou shalt not kill, nor bid anyone kill. 
you are very familiar with that one. You've heard that one before within the Ten Commandments. Here's two. Thou shalt not commit adultery or rape. You've heard that one also. That's part of the Ten Commandments. But this is coming from the 42 Laws of Mayat, in which that um, goes into as high as 147 laws, in which that combined with the Sumerian texts of the Habarabi codes, in which that we get the same principles of the 613 laws within the Old Testament. Number three, thou shalt not avenge thyself, nor burn with rage. Four, thou shalt not cause terror. Five, thou shalt not assault anyone, nor cause anyone pain. Six, thou shalt not cause misery. Seven, thou shalt not do any harm to men or to animals. Eight, Thou shalt not cause the shedding of tears. Nine, thou shalt not wrong the people nor bear them any evil intent. Ten, thou shalt not steal nor take which does not belong to you. Eleven, thou shalt not take any more than thy fair share of food. Twelve, thou shalt not damage the crops, field, or the trees. Thirteen, Thou shalt not deprive anyone of what is rightfully theirs. 14. Thou shalt not bear false witness nor support false allegations. You've heard that as part of the Ten Commandments. 15. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not false, um, falsely speak falsely to the hurt of others. That's within the Ten Commandments. 16. Thou shalt not use fiery words, nor stir up any strife. 17. Thou shalt not speak or act deceitfully to hurt of another. 18. Thou shalt not speak scornfully against others. 19. Thou shalt not eavesdrop. 20. Thou shalt not ignore the truth or words of righteousness. 21. Thou shalt not judge anyone hastily or harshly. 22. Thou shalt not disrespect sacred places. 23. Thou shalt not wrong to be done to any worker or prisoners. 24. Thou shalt not be angry without good reason. 25. Thou shalt not hinder the flow of running water. In other words, dams. 26. Thou shalt not waste the running water. 27. Thou shalt not pollute the, the water or the land. 28. Thou shalt not take God's name in vain. 29. Thou shalt not despise nor anger God. Of course, thou shalt not take God in vain. Of course, it's part of the Ten Commandments. 30. Thou shalt not steal from God. 31. Thou shalt not give excessive offerings, nor less than what is due. 32. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Of course, that's part of the Ten Commandments. 33. Thou shalt not steal from nor disrespect the dead. 34. Thou shalt, not, thou shalt remember and observe the appointed holy days. 35. Thou shalt not hold back the offerings due to God. 36. Thou shalt not interfere with sacred rites. 37. Thou shalt not slaughter any, um, slaughter with evil intent any sacred animal. 30. Seven, thou shalt not act with gall or insolent. Thirty-nine, thou shalt not be unduly proud nor act with arrogance. Forty, thou shalt not magnify your condition beyond what is appropriate. Forty-one, 
thou shall do no less than your daily obligations require. 42. Thou shalt obey the law and commit no treason. Now, understand that these 42 commandments, on which that are the principles of the seven principles of my yacht, which is what we live by, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and morals, were actually was written at least 2,000 years before the Ten Commandments of said Moses, and that the 42 principles of my yacht are one of Africa's and the world's oldest source of moral and spiritual um, instructions. My yacht, of course, the um, ancient Egyptian um, netter, uh, divine principles of truth, justice, and righteousness at the foundation of natural, social, order, and unity. All right? Ancient Africans developed a humane system of thought and conduct, which has been recorded in volumes of African wisdom literature, such as these declarations from the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night, the so-called Book of the Dead, in which that is one of the books in which that um, we spoke about a little bit earlier by E.A. Um, by um, E.A. Um, Wallace Budge, as well as also it is recorded in the teachings of Patahotep, which is actually one of the oldest books, the writers of Ani, um, Amenhotep, Mercaru, and others. Now, we also see in question 36 um, of the 101s, of the um, 102, excuse me, and the 101s, 35, um, what does the name Jesus mean? And Jesus means justice. Um, Jesus means justice because Jesus is symbolic or is a metaphor in this particular um, um, way for justice, which is Mayat. Mayat is the, um, the personification of justice and righteousness um, upon which um, a law, uh, which um, Mayat um, sister, um, excuse me, um, Mayat's father is Ura. Allah is Ura, um, who created the universe, of course, and Mayat is also the essence of God and creation. Therefore, it is Mayat who judges the souls when it arrives in the judgment hall of Mayat, and Mayat herself becomes the scale upon which the heart of the initiate um, or the said um, spirit is judged. And Mayas judge the heart, which is the unconscious mind of the initiate, in an attempt to determine to what extent the heart has lived in accordance with these particular laws. You know, truth, corrective, um, correctiveness, reality, genuineness, outright, um, outrightness, righteousness, justice, steadfastness, and unadulterable nature of creation. Now, many of us don't understand these principles to the fullest extent, and therefore we suffer um, and still bicker amongst ourselves concerning it. But if we will begin to start utilizing these particular principles as mores, we will have less to bicker about because, as we will see, one of the first laws is basically is Let's get to it. One of them, which is one of the most powerful ones to me, is that thou shalt not avenge thyself nor burn with rage. Um, thou shalt not assault anyone or cause anyone pain. Um, thou shalt not do um, any harm to man or to animal. Um, thou shalt not wrong the people nor bear them any evil intent. They shall not um, deprive anyone of what is rightfully theirs. Thou shalt not bear false witness nor support false allegations. You know, if we would just go by those particular principles, um, I mean, these are all 42 of them and they're very precise as far as the expectation morally on which that we should be having towards each other. Thou shalt not ignore the truth 
or words of righteousness. Thou shalt not judge anyone hastily or harshly. You know, so let let us understand these particular principles um, to the full extent. Because if Jesus is justice, and justice is one of the principles of my yacht, then we understand um, what we're supposed to be focused on, which is morality, and justice deals with the law. So we're talking about cardinal virtues or the cardinal law, which is morality. But it also correlates to Mayat's consort, which is Tahuti. And Tahuti have 42 books, which correlate to the 42 um, laws of Mayat, which also correlate to the 42 netters or netter rules, um, in which that was associated with Mayat's principles. Um, as well as also, he has seven main principles, just like she had seven principles. Um, his, of course, is dealing with rhythm, vibration, um, as far as also um, rhythm, vibration, correspondence, um, polarity, mentalism, which is dealing with um the power of the mind, the all, um, everything in the universe is mental, gender, which is sex, yang and yang, push and pull, or centrifugal or sympathetic force, you know. Um, so these particular principles of Tahuti or Jehuti and Mayat, we talk about universal principles, which is what Tahuti principles symbolize, and earthly morality or moral principles in which that Mayat principles also symbolize. And this is the way in which that we should live our life is based on these principles. It's not just something in which that happens after you pass on and you have to, and the soul have to be judged. Yes, the soul or the spiritual soul is judged and the heart, which is uh, weighed on the scale is weighed on the scale of my yacht. And if this heart is heavier than the feather, what is said is that the heart, which symbolizes your memories, is eaten by a animal by the name of animate. And that thus you will have to incarnate again, but this time without your memories from your previous or past life. In other words, there will be a veil placed over those particular memories. You will not come back knowing what you would have known before, all right? Now, if your heart is lighter than the feather, then you will proceed forward and travel into higher dimensions, other planets, et cetera, et cetera, in which that deals with life longer than 70 or to 120 years. It's about planets in which that life may be 500 years, 5,000 years, 50,000 years, or et cetera. Now, this might be hard for some of you to understand, but this is the information in which that you have to go and gather. Um, the Holy Quran, Circle 7, um, goes into how the ethers feed and nurtures um, creation and the creatures of creation. Hence, man is nurtured by the ethers. All right? Meaning that we receive sustenance from the cosmos, from the stellar, from the solar energies in which that penetrates and permeates in the earth atmosphere. As a matter of fact, according to scientists, quantum physicists, they state that 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. It's a proven fact that scientists state that your physical body is nothing more than composed of stardust. That's actually what you are. You're a walking star. So as a walking star, um, it is necessary to feed on light, and this light is given to you abundantly from the cosmos as it rains down upon you. And thus, as a carbon being or a melanated being, you absorb this energy through your melanocytes. So you're actually being nurtured by the universe, hence by God, by Allah, Ur-Ra. And this is 
um, some of the higher sciences in which that you will learn, because these principles are dealing with the higher self through the holy breath. The holy breath um, is something in which that you definitely have to get more in, and instead of just looking at it from a literal or from an objective, as it becomes subjective, objective standpoint or, or point of view, you have to look at it as if um, you're dealing with this on a daily basis because that's something which that you always do. You breathe 25,920 times in a 24-hour span. So you must deal with the science of the holy breath. If you lengthen your breath, you go beyond karma, meaning less karmatic experiences you have to face in this life simply by mastering the science of breath. This is what is really going on. Now, most of the time you do not get these teachings, and this is the sad part for those who are Moors. They do not get these particular teachings, and because of that, the people, you know, really suffer you know, as far as those who want to come in and learn more science. But these grand sheiks, these assistant grand sheiks, these chairmen, assistant grand chairmen, secretaries, treasurers, all of whom supposed to have gone through their adapt chamber, don't teach on the science of breath, which is the holy breath. And by mastering the holy breath, as the Holy Quran Circle 7 states, you receive peace and harmony, the unification with a law. Now, if you're going to unify with a law, which is Ura, which is talking about the two crowns, the red crown and the white crown, which the unifier or symbolic to the unification of the lower self and higher self, that comes through the holy breath. That is merging the lower self with the higher self. The four lower chakras are known within the nation of Islam, which are the student enrollment lessons, the lost found Muslim lessons of North America, as well as also within the nation of God's nurse lessons, in particular the justice lesson. And they're talking about the four devils, These four, which is actually one through 14. In the four devils, um, when it speaks about um, why must um, Muhammad or any Muslim murder the devil, what is the duty of each Muslim in regard, in, um, in regard to the four devils or in regard to the devil? These talking about these four devils. These four devils are talking about your lower chakras, your root chakra, your navel chakra, your solar plexus, your heart chakra. This is where your mortal body lives. These mortal bodies dies or dissipates and returns to the realm of form along with your physical body upon death. It is your Aku, your Ka, and your Ba, which are your three higher chakras, which is your throat chakra, your third eye, and your crown chakra, in which that survives death. If you're able to move the Kundalini energy up, all right, if you're able to move the Kundalini energy up above the chakra, Okay? Okay? All right, that is the key. That is what you, that is what we must do. We must be able to move that energy up beyond the heart chakra. Okay? Now, once again, this isn't taught. And how you do that is through the holy breath. By lengthening your breath, Deepening your breath, you are able to ignite the Kundalini beyond the capacity of just 10% usage in your body, 10% usage of just your DNA, 10% usage of just your um, brain. And you're able to go into the 90% of usage of your DNA, 90% usage of 
your brain, 90% usage um, or being able to um, see into the dark matter, um, black energy known as the universe. In other words, you're able to go deeper than just being confined to the 10% usage or scientists say that we only use about 10% of our brain. You do that through the holy breath. Now, the holy breath, once again, is the unifier. It is what moves you from out your lower nature, in which that deals with lust, greed, jealousy, envy, and hatred, everything that harms, and moves you up into your higher self, love, true peace, freedom, and justice, the attributes of known as the mother of virtue. It's through the breath. So we know that even in medicine today, scientists will tell you that the breath can calm the emotions. It calms the emotions. If you simply breathe deep and long, you can actually calm the emotions, anger, fear, all of these things are calmed. That means that the chemical response in the brain in which that is triggered in these particular organs are now kind of acted by endorphins from the brain. Instead of producing an ill feeling in which that causes diseases, ailments, sicknesses, endorphins are produced in which that produce joy, happiness, good feelings, in which that produce health. This is what we have to get to the understanding of, overstanding of, understanding of, that we have a book, and it speaks about these various sciences, but we don't respect it enough beyond just a historical message, thinking that everything in it is historical or literal. When these are keys in there in which that is supposed to be taught, in the adapt chamber, or at least lead people up um, to come and join the temple structure in order to get them into the adapt chamber in order to learn these particular sciences. But if you can't even explain the simple sciences of life, why would they even come? And many sheiks I hear, I hear, cannot explain it properly because they are confined to that one lesson. But yet on our nationality card, we honor all the prophets. We honor Muhammad. We honor Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, etc. Jesus is Christianity. Muhammad is Islam. Buddha is Buddhism. Confucius it's Confucianism, a Kung Su, in which that leads you into Taoism. Jesus, in the Holy Quran, Circle 7, went into India and sat, up and sat down with the Brahmins. So hence he learned of Krishna. So here it is, these particular lessons in which that we have, in which that is the same books in which that he held up, Prophet Noble Ali held up and said that it's through these books in which that you will find your salvation. So go and save yourselves. It is through these two books, the Holy Quran, Circle 7, and the 101, formerly the 102. But yet we're not using it. How are we going to save ourselves? We're thinking just on a materialistic plane, but yet... It is said that he went on to the soul plane because it was there in which that he can do better for us. So he understood the signs of the soul plane. He understood the science of the ethers and how the ethers nurture us physically because we are a component of the lowest aspect of the ethers. Understand that you have your physical body, you have your ethereal body, or your etheric body. You have your emotional body, which is your astral body. You have your mental body. You have your causal body. You have your 
spiritual body and you have your soul body. The four lower bodies dies or dissipates along with the change of form with the veil in the flesh, what we call death. And those energy dissipates. And I don't mean disappear um, per se, like doesn't exist in that, but dissipate in the sense that it goes into what is known as, as said previously, the realm of form, where women who are um, on the verge of being pregnant or when the soul begins to come down through that vortex between the male and the female and life begins to be um, residing within that womb, the sperm um, goes to the egg, the ovum, blow, the head of the sperm blows up to the, to the exact equivalent size, equivalent size of the um, nucleus of the egg, the tail breaks off, and then the, um, the cells begin to go through mitosis, cellular division. It is at that point that the energies uh, from the realm of form nurtures, all right, nurtures, those energy nurtures um, that, that life principle. What is the physical body? Deteriorates, decomposes, and the energy is released through the ground, through the plants, oxygen, is released through the plants, released through the trees, released through um, the bushes, scrubs, or whatever the case is, flowers. The oxygen is released. We, we take in the oxygen. In particular, the woman takes in the oxygen during pregnancy. Then the ethereal, or the ethers, which is the air and the atmosphere and the refined air in the atmosphere, what is known as prana, chi, or key energy. She takes that in. She takes in all of these particular energies in order to help with the formation of the template of the human body. This is what she does in order to bring forth life here to this plane. And this, these principles are taught right in the Holy Quran Circle 7, if we paid attention. But these are some of the things in which that, when you come into this information, you have to read deeper than just what is there. Otherwise, you can't answer anyone's questions. And that is actually what it's supposed to be about. If you're talking about uplifting for the humanity, then that means... That's the aspect of so, of saving souls. And how can you save the soul if you don't teach them the signs of the Holy Breath in which that the uh, Holy Quran Circle 7 specifically speaks about us needing to teach as the revealers of light. We must teach the signs of the Holy Breath. It's the Holy Breath in which that harmonize and unifies. It makes us one with a law. That's what it says. So that means instead of looking at the lower self and the higher self as two different components, if we utilize the holy breath, then it actually is only one component, and that's a law, or a ra. And a ra is about you are, which means greater, and ra, or a, and the r's and the L's are interchangeable, so U R R A becomes U L L A, in which that becomes A L L A H, which is a law. But once again, we talk about the Egyptian adept, so we had to take it back to Egypt. You can't just leave it at an Arab interpretation, because we're not Arabs; we're African, and we're Moors, meaning that based on the definition. We are the oldest indigenous people on the planet. In the fourth edition of the Black Law Dictionary, land is synonymous with moors. Moors is synonymous with land. So that means no matter what continent that we walk on, we are the oldest indigenous people on every part of the continent. That is no doubt about that. But also in regard to that,
Um, also in regard to that, um, we are not just the oldest people or the most indigenous people, the original natives, but we also are the caretakers and the guardians of this planet. And we have, and our role as being such has been absurded by those in which that are not following the laws of Mayat, they're not following our true peace, freedom, and justice. And if we're going to uplift fallen humanity, we must be, we must have the strength in order to state what is wrong and know the difference between what is real justice, which is based on law, and what is the jural law, natural law. God's law, unalienable rights as compared to de facto law, legalities or legal, colorable law. We must know the difference between these two categories, statutes, codes, rules, regulations, ordinances. All of these are colorable laws. If it don't correlate or coincide with the Constitution, which means body, then it actually we're dealing with something in which that is conflicting with common sense law, which is common law, is conflicting with natural law, which is the jury law, God's law, and it's conflicting with you having unalienable rights or inalienable rights. So we must understand the difference, understand, understand the two differences, the two categories. Cause one have the attributes, as I would think of, as the lowest self, while others, while the others will have attributes of the higher self. If you state that we must follow the rules, the, um, the statutes, codes, rules, regulations, ordinances, in which that do not correlate to the Constitution, Article 6 in particular, in which that deals with um, the Constitution, its laws, and treaties being the supreme law of the land, and you justify human rights violations, and you justify civil rights violations, and you justify liberties being stripped away, freedoms being stripped away, and us coming under an indoctrination, and we're coming under a confinement by government when it is us in which that form government. It doesn't make any sense. And obviously many have never read the Declaration of Rights of it of um the Declaration of Independence. Or what is called originally a declaration. And since that is the case, um we are dealing with a mind state in which that says um, we're not to overthrow the laws of of this government. And it's not about overthrowing laws of this government because we can't overthrow natural law, God's law, universal law, or inalienable or unalienable rights. In other words, everyone has the right to be with the one they love. They won't have to write in order to produce a family. They won't have to write in order to work and be um, and given um, whether food, water, clothing, or shelter, monies, or whatever the case is in return for the services rendered. Right. These are rights in which that we have, in which that government should not be able to dictate policy to or on. All right. All right. Um. Let me see. 
Are there any questions? If so, call in to 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. All right, Um, we have about 10 more minutes. So, let's continue on. This goes back also to the misunderstanding, like we said last week, about the word Muslim or Muslim. While many are debating over the word Muslim, over the word Muslim, um, because Prophet Nubadur Ali used the word Muslim, then they're bickering over the fact if the word Muslim is the same as the word Muslim. When the fight is not about that. And then they tell you that Muslim or Muslim means one who submits. To a law, to the will of a law. When the word Muslim or Muslim is derived from the word Salam or Islam, in which that means peace. The word peace is there even in the definition of the word Muslim or Muslim. So it does not mean to submit to the will of a law. Many have stated that it means surrender in peace. Surrender in peace. And what is that surrender in peace? What is that talking about? Peace, once again, is part of the principles, part of the five principles of the moral science. No true peace, freedom, and justice. But it is also the Matian law, Mayat, in which that when we're talking about peace, and surrender to peace, we're talking about the lowest self, surrendering to the higher self. That's what that symbolizes. So you are Muslim or Muslim in the sense of that you surrender your lower self to the higher self in peace. Peace is one of the attributes of the higher hey. self. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hi, Mommy. Peace is one of the principles of the higher self. Do what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Um. I don't have any questions right now from anyone. So what we're going to do is a closing prayer. Turn to the east. Raise the seven up. And we say our Lord binds our hearts and our minds back to our ancient forefathers, divine creed and principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohims. Amen. Now, I want to say this before we leave off it, is that notice that it says divine creed and principles. These principles, the ancient forefathers divine creed and principles. These principles go back to ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, Temere. We have to understand that. Yes, we are um, by historical information, so-called historical information, or Canaanites, the Amorites, the um, so forth and so on, um, in which that produced um, later on, you know, from the Kushites. But if you look at the Kushites, the Kushites are the ancient Ethiopians. The Kushites are based on Herodotus. He stated that the first colony of Egypt came from out of the interior of of Cush, of Ethiopia, 
Abyssinia, as it was called, um, over history, in which that came out, in which that went up into the delta known as Egypt. And that's what that priesthood was. The priesthood was based on the Cushite information, Cushite principles. Um, the Holy Quran Circle 7 speaks about, in chapter 47, of old man Cush. Okay? Um, we have to understand these principles. So I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to say goodnight to everyone. First of all, all the radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>